start that now. Um, and so you'll probably get a little, little pop up there. So if you can just uh, click that, that would be great. Um, a recording of this will be available afterwards on the Admitted Spartans Day webpage, as well as our um, Admitted Spartan Day webpage, the college webpage as well. Um, when you logged in, your audio and your video was turned off, but we would love to see your faces if you're comfortable with that. It would be awesome to see who's here, um, you know, get to see a smile and a wave. That would be great. Please feel comfortable doing that um, as well. Throughout the presentation, uh, I will be monitoring the chat. So if you have some questions, please feel free to put them in there. And as our, our presenters are chatting um, or presenting, I will kind of uh, assist, facilitate some of those questions. And then when we get to the end of the session, uh, we will have some time for Q&A and we'd love to just have you unmute and ask questions if you're comfortable doing that as well. Um, so, for today, we only have about an hour with you, just until about 11. So um, wanted to try to squeeze in as much as we could about the college, about our programs, how excited we are to have you join us and um, answer any initial questions that you have. So the plan for this morning is to have um, a welcome from our Associate Dean, Marco Cesaro, and then our department chairs are gonna chat with you a little bit about the um, different departments. So child and adolescent development and communicative disorders and sciences. And then we'll wrap up um, with myself. I'm Janine Perez. I'm the director of the Student Success Center here in the College of Education and answer any questions that you might have. And then just kind of quickly preview the rest of Admitted Spartans days as they're known now. We have multiple days to share with you. Uh, so, as questions come up, please feel free to pop them in the chat, but I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to our Associate Dean. Thank you, Janine. Um, yeah, welcome. Good morning, everybody. I'm Marcos, and it's good to be here with you all. Um, like Janine said, feel free if you want to uh, show us your faces. We'd love to see it, but we understand if that's not something you're ready to do right now. Um, it's always good for us though, to, to kind of be able to put names and faces together. That's what we strive to do. We are really excited to have you all joining our intellectual community of just commitment and care and dedication to equity and justice and freedom dreaming for all of the youth and the families and the communities that we serve. Um, we are all about it in, in our college. And we know that this can be really overwhelming, making this transition um, to this large university. A lot of you have been just you know, doing all of your learning remotely for the last couple of years. So we understand that and we want to make sure we have the, the space and the time for you all to answer any and all questions. So if you, get to, if you have a chance to do that, today now i mean like janine said anything at all just drop it in the chat now and we will cover them before we leave or we'll get back to you on it if there's something that we need to dig into a little bit um, but we want to make sure that you just feel like you have you know everything you need to know um, to to make the commitment to our college um, so I i'll just share a couple of things that to me are really amazing about the college to give you some kind of feel again we're not in person um, but we're going to, you know, try and give you a, some kind of general feel. So number one is our students and their families. You know, our students are incredible. And, and Emily and Janine and Nitty can tell you so much more about that. But they are, they come with just dedication and commitment and passion and excitement and energy. And they come with great ideas and just like wanting to dig into both of our programs that are here today have these amazing labs. And students just like jump in head first and, and make a make a life out of um, the work that they do here. So that's really cool. And, and also the people here, um, our staff, our counselors, our advisors are incredible and they're so dedicated. You know, uh, one example is that um, Janine is on her vacation. She's been on vacation all week <laughs> with her daughter enjoying time. She was just mentioning, I saw that Becca had a giant shirt on. Well, Janine and her daughter were at the Giants game on yesterday, um, watching them pull off a, I think it was a ninth inning victory, right? 
um, yeah, so uh, so just that dedication, that commitment to you all is really, really significant and our faculty and chairs as well, right? We've been hiring some really dynamic faculty that have been coming into the college and joining our team that is just so excited to be able to, um, looking forward to next year, right? I mean, we had a, we had a retreat yesterday for um, our college and so we had staff and we had faculty and we had our chairs there and people were just excited for what the new year is gonna bring. Um, our student success center is incredible. So the, the shop that Janine runs has these advisors, um, who are, have a, have a, um, a pool of students that they work with and dedicate themselves to making sure you get everything you need. And if you decide like, Hey, I'm going to change my major. We just want to support you, right? Like we're here to make sure that you, um, that you get everything that you need out of it. Um, there's a couple of like very exciting projects, right? Um, Emily can talk to you more about this, but, but the, the um, Chad folks and, and others across the college have developed this um, early childhood institute that's just trying to provide opportunities for our students and community to get engaged in the most innovative and necessary approaches to working with young children. Um, in addition to like the, just the, the preschool labs on campus, which are so much fun. Um, and then there's the Healthy Development Com Community Clinic um, that's being started at Oak Grove High School. And, um, folks in both Chad and in CDNS are doing amazing work getting this off the ground. But it's going to be an opportunity for you to like do work that's going to be applied to your professions afterwards in a number of fields and think interdisciplinary or across our fields. So that's really cool. We have this Institute for Emancipatory Education that's bringing in amazing folks to support our faculty who are now thinking of really creative ideas of how to help our students be prepared to just meet critical community needs. Um, and there's a ton of spaces on campus that are incredible. I've done a lot of work in the Central on campus at Chicanox Latinx Student Success Center, but we also have a Black Leadership and Opportunity Center. We have our Mosaic uh, Multicultural Center, LGBTQ and Women's Centers. Um, and there's just incredible things happening in those spaces every single day of every week of the year. So it is, you know, San Jose State is a place for imagining, right, for freedom dreaming, for thinking about who we want to be, and also a lot of times getting surprised at things that we didn't know we could be and could do, um, and, and we, we're here for it. So it is just an amazing campus as well. It's, if you haven't been there here, you should come before you um, make your decision. But as you know, downtown San Jose um, voted uh, the number one most transformative university in the country recently. I know it's a lot, right? It's too much. Okay, so I'll stop. <laughs> um, but I just wanted you to know that how we think about this space and how we think about you and you all joining us. So please reach out to us, reach out to your professors, um, to the amazing staff. Nidhi and, and um, Emily are going to kind of welcome you and talk to you a little bit about their programs and know that it's okay to ask questions. So, um, you know, any, anything and everything, even though you feel like, I don't know, is this the right place to ask, ask a question? Ask it. Um, and if you need any support or your families need any support in making that decision, some of you are coming a long way. Um, like who was it? Was it Joel who's coming from San Diego, right? If you need anything, you don't know who to ask. I just put my email address in the chat and you can reach out to me, have your families reach out to me, um, you know, and ask any questions that you have. So have fun. Um, and if you want to come to campus before making your decision, there is events planned for the 23rd, two weeks from today, is that? Um, so yeah, come, come on up and, and spend some time with us. And um, that's all I got to say. I have another commitment at 1030. So I'm going to stick around for just a minute um, and see if there's any questions that come my way in the chat. But otherwise, I hope to see you on campus, San Jose State, really, really soon. Thanks for making the time for this. And I'm handing it back to you, Janine. All right. Thank you, Marcos. Appreciate it. All right. So we're going to dive into the department. So those of you that, um, you know, selected child and adolescent development, whether it was the teacher prep, path, uh, teacher prep pathway, I'm still on vacation here, um, or the general child development degree, uh, Dr. Emily Slesser is our department chair, and she's here to share with you all of the different options. There are a ton. Um, to explore within this program. So I'll pass it over to you, Emily. Thanks, Janine. So yeah, my name is Dr. Emily Slesser. I'm the department chair and also faculty member in our department, Chad. Um, I oftentimes 
go to university meetings and take care to articulate exactly which program we're from, child and adolescent development. It's a bit of a mouthful, but I'm always afraid that people don't know the acronym CHAD. And it's funny because we have such a reput reputation on campus and in the college that everybody knows who CHAD is. So whenever I say my mouthful, child and adolescent development, oh, CHAD. And not only in the university, across the community as well. I imagine that maybe a few of you are already familiar with that. So um, I'm here to talk about CHAD. And as I came in to the department chair role, it was a bit of a shift for me. I was a faculty and focused a lot of my time and effort on uh, teaching and research. And when I uh, changed into the role of leadership and administration in the department, I really wanted to explore the department more generally. And I also wanted to kind of capture what the world was exposed to with regards to our programming. So I did a little exercise here and I compiled and collected all of the language that we were putting out on our website and also the language that we were using in our um, syllabi and in our program learning outcomes, and it is captured here in our word cloud. And unsurprisingly, we have development and we have various stages of development captured centrally in our word cloud here. But I want to also point out to the just diversity, the range of material that we cover in our program and value. So you'll see just the general extent of what we study in the department, all the way from prenatal development, infancy, toddlers, all the way through middle childhood and into adolescence and young adulthood. We do have um, a strength in our research, which I'll go ahead and talk about in just a second, but we also um, take a uh, we have a, a dedication, as Marcos was talking about earlier, um, to applying what we're learning in our research and evaluation to our teaching and advocacy. So again, you'll see that centered there. So if you go to the next slide, Janine, I'll tell you a little bit more about our program. Um, like I said, it's a very robust program. It's one of the largest majors here on campus. We have about 800 students at any given time. Most of our students are transfer students. We also have incoming freshmen. I would say um, it, it can vary from one year to the next, um, but either cohort, you're in good company. There's a lot of students that, um, like I said, come in as freshmen or as transfer students. Um, we have a large representation of our underrepresented minority students. Um, we have a lot of students who are first generation students, and we have students who are coming from um, a, a diverse range of backgrounds. Uh, yeah, and so these are the classrooms that uh, we will welcome you to on campus, either when you come to visit on April 23rd, I believe, I don't want to get that date wrong, but when you come to visit in the near future, or when we welcome you to campus next year. So we have large classes that you see represented here on the left hand side, we have smaller seminar like classes with student presentations featured in the slide on the bottom. All right, so let me tell you a little bit more about our faculty. This is a picture that we captured pre-COVID. Our faculty are well are eager to come back to campus, and we have uh, plans to come back in full um, in the fall. Um, while these uh, topics, terms, and areas of study don't necessarily align with the specific faculty members they're linked up with, it does, uh, I use this image to capture the range of expertise that our faculty bring with them to the program. So you'll see expertise in cognitive development, in adolescence, we have faculty who focus on mental health, queer youth, digital media, media uh, language development, parenting, autism spectrum disorder. You can read more about that, obviously, here on this slide, but also on our website. Um, we have about 40 faculty members uh, who work with us uh, consistently over this period of time. Let me see what's on the next slide here. Let me tell you a little bit about the, the way that we tend to char characterize our undergraduate programming in CHAD. We talk about three different pathways. Um, the pathways, of course, all have a cohesive underlying element of our foundational curriculum, but we have carved out curriculum very specific and tailored to students who, in this example, are preparing for teacher uh, 
careers in teacher education. So students who are preparing to become teachers in elementary school systems um, will pursue a pathway, we call it our teacher prep pathway. Um, it is tailored, like I said, to support students who are looking to become TK, transitional kindergarten, kindergarten through eighth grade um, uh, school instructors. The pathway provides a subject matter foundation, so you get interdisciplinary coursework. You learn not only about the developmental foundations for um, developmentally appropriate pedagogy, but you're also learning about the content that you would be teaching in those elementary school classrooms. So there's foundations in math and science and language and literature, literature incorporated into this pathway. And for that reason, they, uh, students who pursue this pathway have an option to waive some of the um, some of the standardized uh, testing requirements that are required of our uh, teacher prep students pursuing careers in the state of California. This pathway also provides the pre-professional experience requirements. So our students get experience working. What you'll see on the left-hand side is a student working with reading partners in this area. And we also place our students in their practicum courses in um, TK through eight classrooms in and around the San Jose area. All right, the next pathway um, is for students who are pursuing careers in early childhood education. So this is generally for students who have a focus on anywhere between um, birth and infancy through to age five or eight, um, looking at working in preschool classrooms, child development centers, or as becoming early childhood educators and advocates more broadly. Um, we have foundation in infant toddler development. We have um, a faculty comprised of actual preschool teachers and directors of our lab school on campus who also teach the courses that our students um, uh, take in their curriculum here with Chad. This particular pathway does provide the uh, coursework that's needed in the state of California to earn a child development permit at actually one of the highest levels, a site supervisor level upon graduation. We would work with you to document that and um, so that you can have an ease of transition into the work and field. Um, oop, I'll go back one more, Janine, just to showcase that picture on the right-hand side. That is our lab school, and it is up and operating again post-COVID. We're really excited about expanding our programming as we uh, roll out the next academic year. This is where our students will do their practicum hours, again, serving to satisfy one of those uh, CTC requirements. Okay. I'm ready now, Janine, thank you. Um, our third pathway, this is for students who are interested in pursuing advocacy work, working with and supporting children, youth and families in community-based programming and settings. Uh, students pursuing this pathway take um, additional coursework, not additional, but their coursework is tailored to um, not only the development, creation, of programming, but identifying the need for programming um, and evaluating the effectiveness of that programming in the community. Our students pursuing this pathway do their practicum field work, working with community-based organizations, getting a sense of what it looks like behind the scenes to organize these efforts. Um, and as I said, yes, coursework on program management and evaluation. So those are our three different pathways in Chad. We have students pursuing all three pathways and a lot of support in each of those three. Um, we have student clubs that are tailored to some or capture all of these interests. So for example, our Chad club featured on the right hand side there, it's been around for a couple decades now. And what the, um, I, one of the most interesting features of the club is just the network that has been created over this period of time. So working with the Chad Club, even just as an associate student, you get access to a world of alumni who are working in the field and who can answer questions um, about uh, a whole slew of different things, as well as job opportunities in the field. They also host really fun activities, their like game night feature on the left hand side. As I mentioned before, other clubs and opportunities focused on those specific pathways. For example, our early childhood student and alumni network obviously focused on that early childhood piece. Um, we have new department honors program and uh, new research and teaching apprenticeships that are available for our undergraduates 
in addition to our graduate student programming, which I would love to tell you about another day. I think that's all. I'll go ahead and hand it over to my colleague, Dr. Nidhi Mahendra, to talk about um, communicative sciences and disorders. Although, um, of course, if there, I'm going to catch up in the chat. I'm not sure if these um, involved me, but of course, I'll follow up with any questions and stay on the line for y'all too. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, really enjoyed listening to Chad um, and their offerings and. We're hoping to get you really excited about communicative disorders and sciences as well. Um, Janine, I wanted to see if you might be able to stop and um, reshare your screen. I'm not sure if um, if the slide is showing up exactly as I the previous one. This one? Yeah, it uh, it might be. Uh, I'm not sure about our updates, whether they reflect it. If you wouldn't mind just stopping and resharing, that might be- Oh, good. let's see. Okay. Let me stop sharing. And then- Give me one sec, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Okay. 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 There we go. Perfect. Thank you exactly. so much, Janine. All right, everybody, welcome. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Communicative Disorders and Sciences. Um, a heads up that May is celebrated nationally as Better Hearing and Speech Month. And um, a little bit later from the department and via Janine, we will be sending you some information uh, about events that the department is also hoping to participate in and welcome you to the department. Uh, so that you can learn more about what we have to offer. All right, my next slide. So I wanted to start, and you know, Jeremy had posted uh, something in the chat, which is a perfect segue to this slide. I wanted to just tell you a little bit about what is communicative disorders and sciences, so you have a good idea what the major entails. So communicative disorders and sciences is an umbrella term that refers to our whole discipline, and under this umbrella uh, sit a couple of different components. One component that you see in blue is the science behind how do human beings typically speak and produce sounds, how we hear, how we compose ideas in our head and express them in language, both written and spoken, um, how we swallow. This is very much a part of communicative disorders and sciences, as well as how do we think, uh, remember things, pay attention to things um, and articulate them. So that's our cognitive function. So in CDS, one half of your time is spent really understanding what is um, typical functioning in speech, language, hearing, swallowing, cognition, and the spread of that. And so related to this on the left of your screen, you see that we start by building your foundation in understanding speech science, hearing science, phonetics, anatomy and physiology, and then very much the major has a lot to do with how does the brain help us accomplish all these uh, functions of speech, language, hearing, uh, swallowing, and cognition. Now let's talk about the other side of the umbrella. So under the discipline of communicative disorders and sciences sit two clinical fields, which are speech language pathology, as well as audiology. And here at SJSU, we offer graduate degrees in both of those. So after you finished a BA in communicative disorders and sciences, you would pursue graduate training in speech pathology or audiology, depending on your interest. And that leads to you becoming a speech pathologist and audiologist. So the second half of much of your training in CDNS is where having exposed you to the science and foundations, we're really building um, your knowledge and skills, right, about what are communication disorders, uh, what leads to them, what are childhood speech and language disorders, what happens with um, language and cognition, with speech and hearing as we age. Um, we start to pack in all the clinical skills in this latter half of your training where we're teaching you clinical methods, clinical observation skills, 
And then as more of these capstone experiences, a real feather in our cap here in the CDS program is that every single one of our undergraduates um, has a chance to be in clinical practicum. And this is rare across undergraduate CDNS programs, but many of our students who are interested go on to do speech and audiology practicum because they're trying to decide which pathway um, later down the road is appealing to them. All right, my next slide. Um, so I also wanted to give you, you might be wondering, um, I know that it is not entirely common to hear about speech pathology and audiology, despite the fact that these are very rewarding, very fulfilling uh, careers. Now to give you a little bit about the California context, and I call it California dreaming, because I want you to know that in California, we have one of the worst shortages of speech pathologists and audiologists in the entire country. So only Nevada is, um, has a worse shortage than us. So we're second to the worst and most dire shortages um, in the nation. And this means to give you some numbers that the total population of California is about 39.4 million. And we have fewer than 15,000 speech pathologists. And look at how dire the number is with audiologists, that we have fewer than 800 audiologists to serve a population that will soon be 40 million plus. Um, so what this translates into for you immediately in your future, because very quickly you will have this BA and CDS in your hands, um, is that we are expecting in California poised to see a nearly 30% increase in the demand for speech pathology jobs, as well as speech pathology assistance, which is a career you can embark on right after a BA in CDNS, and a 20% increase in demand for audiologists. So this is a good choice. <laughs> good choice for your career long longevity, um, you know, your financial stability, as well as your uh, job satisfaction. So let's give you some fast facts about our department. Um, our uh, leadership team in the department is composed of myself as the department chair. Um, and a little later, I'll tell you about my own professional pathway. Uh, we also have a graduate program director who manages many of the concerns from students and the supports for the graduate side of our department house. Uh, we have a dedicated undergraduate program coordinator who I'll introduce to you um, via her picture in a second, uh, Marcella McCollum, and we have a director of clinical education as well who manages all of the clinical practicum side. And this sort of distributed leadership model uh, is working really well for us because it allows several of us to build a robust foundation of both curriculum as well as other types of supports for students. Um, we have seven professors in the department and are in the search for two more uh, right as we speak. We have a large team of lecturers and clinical educators. And our clinical educators are all clinicians themselves, meaning that they have national certification and California licensure to practice speech pathology or audiology. We have two full-time administrative staff members to help us manage departmental and clinic affairs. And we have six active research labs in the department that many undergraduates participate in when they are seeking to do research projects um, or that they're trying to get additional skills uh, by volunteering in a research lab. Um, we have a large community serving clinic on campus, which is the K Armstead Center for Communicative Disorders, and are now going to be also actively involved with the Healthy Development Community Clinic by having an additional site for student training. So wanted to give you a flavor of our current uh, research active faculty in the department and their different research expertise. So you could see uh, not only does the faculty research span um, from infancy all the way to end of life, and that's a mirror for the scope of practice for speech pathologists and audiologists that we literally work with everyone from newborn uh, all the way into end of life care. Um, so these are some of our uh, longstanding uh, faculty members, and I'm just going to tell you uh, a tiny blurb about each of them. 
Um, Dr. June McCullough is our pediatric hearing loss uh, expert and an audiologist, also the founder of the Doctor of Audiology program here at SJSU. Uh, Dr. Paul Casella has been our former interim dean of the college and his expertise is in intellectual disability as well as autism. Dr. Wendy Kwa is internationally known for her work in augmentative and alternative communication. And this is a uh, subfield of our discipline where uh, we're talking about the concerns of individuals who cannot go through rehab and expect to have the ability to speak. So this often happens in a concern where a child may be born with multiple medical conditions and might not be able to speak verbally, but can still communicate using a tablet or an augmentative device. This also similarly happens when adults might have ALS and very quickly lose all ability to speak and even breathe, but can still communicate when they are supplied with the right kind of device that doesn't require them to talk. So that's Dr. Wendy Kwa's specialty. Uh, my uh, specialization is in medical speech pathology and aphasia and dementia, which if you have been watching the news with Bruce Willis's family sharing that, aphasia has suddenly been catapulted into the national uh, spotlight and we run a wonderful aphasia clinic right here on campus as well. Dr. Peizu Sai is our expert on voice and transgender voice and communication as well as the fluency disorder known as stuttering. Um, she is one distinctive part about her is that she runs the only uh, summer camp for children with stuttering on the entire West Coast. So we have some wonderful clinical programming that we're able to offer all of our students. Dr. Lyle Lustigman is our child language expert and bilingualism expert. We have Dr. Megan Cuellar, who uh, specializes in swallowing disorders as well as motor speech disorders. And then our most newly minted doctor is Dr. Marcella McCollum. And this is the face and name that I really want you to remember because she is our undergraduate program coordinator. And we couldn't have asked for a person uh, with more commitment to undergraduate success because uh, Marcella is not only an SJSU alum, but her particular area of research interest is equity issues uh, about the pipeline into speech pathology. So she uh, spends a lot of her research time focused on uh, who are our undergraduates and how do we get them to be incredibly successful to competing and getting into graduate study. All right, I'll get my next slide. Um, so here are some signature features of the CDS major. And if you were going to um, screenshot uh, any slide in this presentation, this is the one I recommend. Um, first of all, we just invite you to stay in touch with us and get connected with us on Instagram, on Twitter. Um, and then also you have emails here for Cindy Aubrey, our department coordinator, Marcella McCollum, our undergraduate program coordinator, and myself. So, please hit us up for any questions, anything we can do while you're deciding. Um, we would love to be given a chance to own your undergraduate study um, in communicative disorders and sciences. Uh, quickly wanted to tell you about some signature features of our program. We are very fortunate to have small class sections, which means you really can get to know faculty and faculty get to know you on a first name basis. Uh, literally due to these small class sections and clinic sections. We have a three-day fall orientation where you not only get oriented to our department, get to meet our faculty, but also intersect with new graduate students. So you're simultaneously getting exposed to what graduate study involves in our discipline. Um, you have a lot of expert faculty, as I just mentioned, who have both research training as well as they have been licensed practitioners themselves. Um, we have a dedicated undergraduate program coordinator, as I mentioned. We have undergraduate clinic in both speech and audiology, and many of our really talented undergraduates actually do clinical training in both of those aspects because they're trying to round out uh, their undergraduate education. Growing research opportunities in the department, and I'll tell you one such story in a second, 
Um, and we are really getting very good at preparing our undergraduates for competitive applications and success at the graduate study level as well. Uh, we are home to the SJSU chapter of NISLA, which stands for the National Student Speech Language Hearing Association. So also our undergraduate students have leadership opportunities by becoming officers of NISLA. And I think this is uh, kind of coming to a wrap here on my uh, presentation. I wanted to tell you one spectacular CDS story of um, a student named Ashlyn Tadokoro who got her BA in CDS and also got her Master of Science in Speech Pathology with us. And this is one of the most um, beautiful stories I've experienced in my career. And so one summer I was working in my research lab and a student asked if they could volunteer to make copies or file um, paperwork in the lab and just learn a little bit more about my research. That student was Ashlyn. And so she started in that way in my lab, organizing and uh, helping me with data entry, got really interested in aphasia, um, soon became a research assistant as an undergrad, uh, got so excited about SLP, applied to our grad program, uh, became a master's student while remaining a researcher. And so the center picture is a, a trip she took with me to an international conference in Taiwan where she presented her research. And what you see in the last slide is that she, before finishing her master's, had already become a published author um, of a paper on aphasia. And so in, in an astonishing um, short period of about three years, she went from this transition of being a junior to finishing her graduate study and being a published author. And that's the kind of story um, faculty like myself, Emily, um, you know, your uh, support staff like Janine, Marcos, this is the kind of story we get to live and talk about um, very, very often in SJSU. So it's my hope that you're going to be um, one of these many stories that are going to come and enrich our lives. And so finally, philosophically, uh, you know, chairs don't run the university. I wish we did sometimes, but we don't. Um, but philosophically, what grounds department chairs is that we do get to make a big difference to the kind of experience you have in our departments. And we take that charge very, very seriously. So back to my umbrella from the start, um, we really take that job seriously to be a rainbow or a half a rainbow in your cloud as you find your way through undergraduate study. And I wanna close with the words of Rihanna, if you know this artist, one of my favorites, and this is from her song that says, you can come stand under my umbrella. So looking forward to hearing your questions and thank you for listening. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Slesser, Dr. Mahendra for sharing um, so many exciting things about both of your departments. I know our students are um, hopefully have some questions maybe. So this point in the presentation, um, you are welcome to unmute and ask questions of our department chairs, myself. Um, you can put them in the chat if you're more comfortable with that. Um, and while you're thinking about those, I do want to give you some information about some upcoming events. So um, our team in the Student Success Center will be having another Zoom session on Friday, April 15th. We're gonna do that at three o'clock. And we will have some of our current students joining us. So we'll have a Q&A um, opportunity for you with um, our CAD and our CDNS students. Um, you can also connect with us on social media now um, as well. Lots of opportunities, events, um, things that you are able to participate in, whether you um, uh, have completed your intent to enroll or not. And then I also wanted to share our um, uh, more about our Admitted Spartans Day events. So please visit uh, the Admitted Spartans Day website, the sjsu.edu slash Admitted Spartans Days for registration for all of the different events that are happening over the next week or so. Um, if you would like some information about visiting campus, uh, campus tours, whether that be virtual or in person, you can visit our student outreach and recruitment team at sjsu.edu slash store. 
Um, if you have any questions um, uh, prior to admissions, or if you have questions about next steps, that's part of like the intent to enroll process. There are some things you need to complete, signing up for orientation and paying a deposit, you can contact them as well. So before we log off, I wanna see, are there any questions? And I totally understand being at the stage of not knowing exactly what to ask sometimes, but I think that there are a lot of resources that you were um, that, that are included in these slides and a few in the chat. And really, if you just find the college website, um, our LCOE, Lurie College of Education website, you'll, you'll find, I'm pretty confident you'll find what you need, or at least somebody to contact to find what you need. I'm going to go ahead and put our Success Center website in the chat, as well as our um, main email, too. This is a good place to ask the general questions as you're kind of going through the intent to enroll process. We can help direct you to specific folks in admissions or financial aid or housing if there are any of those lingering questions before you decide on what your next steps are going to be. All right. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your Saturday morning. Um, so thank you again, everybody, for logging in today. I know um, we've got a full day of activities for Admitted Spartan Day. Um, we're really glad that you joined us this morning. Thank you so much. And just remember, we're here if you have questions. Love to um, answer any questions that would, would help to solidify your decision to have you join us here, the Lurie College community. Um, Looking forward to seeing you. Thanks everybody.